it off his foot. Nice steal by John Taylor. This kid's a player. Lays it up and in. How do you think this John Taylor? Is? Well, hello, folks. Here we are again. The good old RCBL. The Robin and Corley Basketball League. 25 years, a lot of fun and games. And I know for a fact that you've heard this man's name on my left. This is Monty Bizarro. Welcome to the show, Monty. Thanks, Dick. It's good to see you here because you know what? There's a lot of people mentioned your name. Oh, yeah? And it's always been good stuff. I've heard things about uh, being able to bring the ball up and pop the thing. And like Bob Tankard said a few moments ago, nothing but net. So how in the world did you develop that? Did you play ball when you were a little kid? Yes, I did. I started off as a little kid and just played every day, practicing, shooting, and I was always shorter than most of the guys. And you were I, shorter? Much shorter than everybody else. You were a little kid? Yeah. And you played with the big kids? And I played with the bigger, older kids. Oh, and good. I, and I got better. Uh -huh. And I also learned, because things were happening much faster, I had to learn to shoot quicker, to do something to contribute. And I, that's how I got good at shooting. I just practiced and practiced. So as a kid, did you play in like church leagues and things like that as a child in high school and all that? Did you play in high school? Yes. You did? Where was that? Where did you play in high school? Tech Memorial High School in Erie, Pennsylvania. That's on the, on the lake? Yes. Wow. I remember that. Division I school. You know, I remember in high school, 350 guys went out for the basketball team and I was one of 15. And the shortest, and the <laughs> only one that couldn't dunk a basketball on our team. Did you ever dunk a basketball? Ever? No. You know what? <laughs> At one time in my life, I was almost 6'7", and I never did either. <laughs> I was one of those white guys that couldn't <laughs> jump. It's the truth. Hey, you got to tell the truth, right? So you played high school. You were from Erie, Pennsylvania. What brought you to the vineyard? I had a best friend back home who had a uh, brother out here at the Eggertown Yacht Club managing it and it was the middle of July and they were losing a lot of their summer help and my friend back home said how would you like to go out to Martha's Vineyard and and work and make 500 bucks a week and I said Martha's Vineyard. I would have said 500 bucks a week. When was that? That was in 1986. Uh-huh. So you came in the middle 80s, right in the middle of that real estate ruffle that was going on. Yes. And uh, where'd you go to work? Well, I got into, a after the Yacht Club job ended, I got into construction uh -huh. for Island Construction. And I also worked in the uh, West Tisbury Elementary School as a custodian. Okay. Here it comes, right? Because we used to play there in the school. Yes. Just pickup ball, not the RCBL, but we played pickup ball. So what was your first year in the RCBL? 1987. Okay, so in 87, do you remember who the first guys were that were on a squad with you? Because I know that you were on a couple of really good teams. Yes, I do. Go ahead, let's have it. I remember the fr one of the first teams I was on, Steve Garvin was on my team, Mark Rivers uh -huh. was on my team, our team, I should say. Um, so there's three of you. You got Stevie, you got Riv, 
and you. That's a really good start. Who else do you have? Uh, who else did we have? We had... Uh, Guess what? It'll come to you sometime. Yeah. But listen, from 87, who remembers much anyway? Right. So as the league progressed, do you ever remember playing for a championship? Yes. Okay. When do you think that was? That was... I don't remember the year. That's okay. But it was with... Uh, one year was with the Seal Cash, uh -huh. and the other one was, was with his brother. Okay, Jade. Jade, another okay. year, and yep. this was like in 2000. In the 2000s. Yeah, okay, 2006. Two, yeah. You know, I'm glad you mentioned the Sill because uh, he's been on a show ahead of this. And uh, uh, for you folks that are watching, one of the neat things about this whole series of shows is the fact that uh, people like Monty and a Sill and all the others that have been on the show are in a series. So you can kind of watch a series of RCBL shows. And when Asil was here, he, and maybe this is news for you, that at the Y, there's going to be a brand spanking new basketball court with a running track over it, okay? Mm -hmm. And they've got the funding, and they've got the construction plans, and it's going to kick off pretty quick. And they hope that by 2018, at the tail end of the year, there's going to be a new facility. And Asil said right here on the RCBL documentary show that <clears throat> he and other young guys, everybody's a young guy to me, right? Um, all the young guys are going to get together and get the league going again because it hasn't been running for a while. It had its course. It ran its first 20 some odd years. And I'm really thrilled that they're going to have a new facility. So do you think you could strap them on again and uh, give it a shot, or is that part of your past? I can still play. I still shoot around and play, but hitting the floor hard like I used to, I don't think I want to go through that anymore. Guys uh -huh. over the years have tried to kill me shooting threes. So <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, Fred Fournier was here, and uh, Fred mentioned the fact that carrying around the 280 or whatever it was and all the pounding, uh, kind of took advantage of him. But you know something? We are the generation that started the RCBL. And, oh, yeah, I just had a thought. If you're out there watching, believe it or not, these shows are streamed. And you can pass the word around that if you were to Google MVTV. And then when video on demand comes up, you hit that with the arrow, and then what you get is a small white bar with a magnifying glass at the end. If you put in that selection box, R, C, B, L, hit the magnifier, you've got the whole series of shows that we've done. So I know for a fact that uh, the show that we're preparing now is going to be an awful lot of fun to watch. Monty, you got any last minute thoughts? Something you want to really, something memorable, something that really struck you when you were playing? Just the camaraderie, the, the guys, and getting together and, you know, and competing. Anybody in particular you like to compete against? Against? Uh, I would say the Lakers, Elmer. Oh, that whole bunch. Yeah. Yeah, the Lakers crew. That was a good team. Excellent team. Brought your game up. Sure yep. did. <clears throat> as far as the game goes... We all enjoyed it. It was a, one of the best times in a lot of people's lives. And you can tell the way people are when they come here to the studio and do a sit down like Monty and I are doing right now. Um, a couple of other guys that are coming along in this show. Uh, Monty, do you remember Warren Holmberg and uh, Chuck Downing? Do you remember those guys? Yes. Guess what? We'd like to introduce Chuck and Warren. Hello again, folks, and uh, welcome to the documentary about the RCBL. As a reminder, it was the Adult Basketball League that lasted almost 25 years in the winter here on the Vineyard. I am pleased to say right now that I have two recognizable local figures. On my left is Warren Holmberg. You recognize him? from Leslie's Drugstore, 
On my right is Chuck Downing, and you recognize him from across the street at Off Main. Welcome to the show, you guys, and it's uh, remembrances and memories that we all have. Um, I'll start with you, Warren. When did you, when did you play ball in the RCPL? I think it was at 89, I think was probably the first year that I played. It was either 89 or 90, I can't remember exactly. And how long? I think I only went about three or four years. It wasn't that long, uh, but it was uh, something to look forward to every, every week, also all winter long. It, it was a, a great way to spend a couple of hours Monday or Tuesday nights. Right, a good break in the winter, something to look oh, forward it to. Was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, got a to lot meet, of fun. Got to meet some fabulous guys like you two. Yeah, well. And <laughs> we, we just had a lot of fun. Yes, we certainly did. Chuck, I mean, uh, you were a basketball junkie like me. Uh, when, yeah. did you, when did you play? Well, I got to the island in 89, so it was probably a couple of years. It was at the Tisbury School before, uh, before I think uh, the games were at the Tisbury School before they moved to the boys. It's not the Girls Tisbury Club. School, it's the Tis Dome. Tis Dome. Yeah, um, Tis Corley, Corley, Corley named yeah. the, the venues and the Tis Dome and the Egg Dome and yeah. all the different kinds of domes. So I started playing in the Egg Dome and that was in the early 90s. And, uh -huh. and uh, but you know, most most of the time that I played was you know in the, in the hard courts in Oak Bluffs. You know, that's where I met you and played yeah, against that's right. you. You know, and uh, but it's been a it's been a while. I played until I couldn't play anymore until my uh, hips uh, wore out and uh, and I couldn't walk anymore. That's you wore out I the played. parts. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's You're where Warren parts. comes in. Warren, <laughs> over there at the drugstore, you have anything for worn parts? <laughs> uh, unfortunately not, yeah. Who do you play with, Warren? You remember any of the guys? Uh, well, you were on our squad one of the years. Uh, I played for the Blazers, I think it was the name. Jerry Jacobs was okay. captain of the team. Uh -huh. um, I don't remember who else was on the team to start with. I know after a couple of years, uh, some of the, the younger guys came in. Uh, Sandy Fisher was on the team. Okay. Um, and Jerry and Sandy were a couple of ex exceptional shooters, for our squad anyway. Outside uh, shooters, both yeah, of them. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I can't remember everyone that was on the team, though. It's, it was all just a blend of people, just because you're talking to everyone all night long. and. The whole league was a blend. Yeah, exactly. It really, it, the, the league blended the island. Who'd you play with, Chuck? Yeah, I played with a lot of all the guys he was talking about. Um, the last year I played with, uh, I played. Uh, we put together, we got together. We were lucky enough to get together a team of like full of coaches, like Mike Joyce, Chris Joyce. Oh, you were loading the team. They were, <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> they were loading. The, I was just a pawn, but but uh, um, but you know. Uh, I played with Elmer. I played with a uh, um, you know uh, Heath Estrella. Uh, Monty Bizarre, be coming in. Uh, the Welsh brothers, uh, you know, everyone, every, there's still a little crossover, the guys who are playing right now, they're still playing, so I play with those. Uh, Do you know what guys. we called you? No. Reliable. Reliable. You know why? No. We knew where you were going. We knew Remember where, where you were going? Well, that's, that's you were going to sign. the foul line. If everybody yeah. that played yeah. the game and with, on your team knew yeah. how solid and reliable you were, because if things got mixed up or whatever, we could always kick it back to the foul line and you'd always take the shot. And every now and then, nah, never mind that. You'd usually hit the shot, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <the other> <laughs> hey, Warren, do you remember the time? Can I tell the story about Warren? <clears throat> of course. Okay, this is a super, super thing. The gyms were small. And sometimes the play would be so fast back and forth that you'd get mixed up, which end am I going? Am I on defense, am I on offense or whatever? And one time, down at the Boys and Girls Club in Edgartown, the ball got loose, and you got it, and you were all by yourself. You grabbed the ball, and you didn't know what direction to go in. That sounds and, right. and somebody said, you remember this? Warren, shoot the ball. You shot the ball, and you hit the shot, and we probably won the game thanks to your one shot with that loose ball. And that was probably my one shot for that year. Well, and guess that, what? That, that was <laughs> one thing I just, uh, was not my forte. It's a cornerstone from our <laughs> remembrances here on this show, you know? Uh, are there any things you remember stick out in your mind, Chuck? Oh, geez, a lot of things. It was really kind of important to me playing basketball. Too important, I think, because... Uh, 
because you know you sacrifice your body, your time, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, hopefully, the younger guys realize that, that it's a it's a small window. As long as it is, it's a small window to play. But but um, uh, you know, we came to the brink of the Lakers when we we're the was brink? like at a, a brink of a, a victory <laughs> over the Lakers in the last game of the series, and and um, and. Uh, <laughs> we were up by one, and we were covering all the main guys, and and all the sol there are a couple of solid guys like uh, uh, Chris Forbes oh, yeah. and uh, John Healy. He didn't get a whole lot of press, but uh, but uh, we left Chris Forbes open in the corner, and someone hit, and he it, it, it went up by one, and we were uh, we were uh, sunk with like eight seconds left. And you went down by one. Yeah, but you were close. We were close. We were well, close. Close yeah. is good in horseshoes, but not in basketball. Yeah, so, but you did. You came yeah. close. Yeah. Any particular thing stick out, Warren? Anything uh, that you might remember that was special to you? Yeah, I, I'll never forget the first game that I played. Uh, Jerry put me out there and told me to guard the redhead over there. And it was uh, Woody Arugio. We were, we were playing. Oh, my uh, God. You were on Woody. We were playing yeah. Team Arugio, uh, the, the <laughs> Spurs. Um, and I said, Jesus Christ, I'm glad I don't have to tackle this guy. I mean, he's solid. But he took two steps towards me and spun me around so fast that I think they had to close the gym for a week to get me out of the floor. <laughs> Is that right? Oh my God. So you God, screwed yourself right oh, into the floor? He turned me around so fast and all I could do was laugh at that. Well, the Arujos played a lot of ball. The Spurs yep. were a good solid team. Yes. And a lot of those guys will be coming in here. Uh, one of the things I like to remember is the fact that I knew I could always count on Chuck to be at the foul line. And I also knew that one turnaround shot that you took at the Boys and Girls Club in Eggertown that was a game winner. <laughs> so uh, to wrap this thing up, uh, any last thing you want to throw in, Chuck? Um, it was a great time. Uh, I really miss it. You know. Yeah, that's for sure. I, mean, yeah. I miss yeah. it too. That was, it, w it was a fabulous time. Boy, that's a great yeah. summary, a fabulous and a great and a time that was had by all. So, folks, tell everybody to come and watch MVTV, video on demand. Click it. Put RCBL in the white box when it shows up and spread the word. Thanks for watching and look for you next time. Yeah, man.